Hey guys, welcome back. And today I'm going to be looking at the biggest reaches in the 2023 NFL draft. Who are some players that were taken a little bit earlier than we expected and why I think they should have been taken later? Should they have been taken at all? Now, by no means am I saying any of these players are bad players. I think all of these guys are supremely talented players. They were just taken a little bit earlier than I thought they should have been. But before I get into it, make sure you guys hit that like button. Subscribe if you are new. We're so close to 650 subscribers. So if we could hit that today, that would be amazing. I'm in Disney still, but I wanted to get this video up for you guys. Let's get into it, starting with Jameer Gibbs. I love Jameer Gibbs, the player. I think he's the number two running back far and away. I don't think he should have been picked at 12. I don't know that they would have got him anywhere else, but at number 12, I think that price was a bit steep. And what does make sense now, considering they've traded DeAndre Swift, Gibbs is a great receiving back, but I thought number 12 was really high for a guy like Gibbs. While I like the pick, I understand the pick, still think the range was high. We saw two running backs go in the top 15, which is absolutely insane. Maybe it's a new trend, I'm not sure, but I think Jameer Gibbs is a very good player, taken a little bit too high. Next up, we got Jaden Reed, who was picked at number 50. Now, some of these late-round guys, you'll see why. A lot of these guys were picked in the first three rounds. Jaden Reed's an interesting one. I think he's just a third- or fourth-round receiver. And the Packers took him at number 50. This reminds me quite a bit of when the Giants took Wandale Robinson last year, a guy who was projected to go later. Excuse me. Was projected to go later. And they just wanted him for his speed. And Jaden Reed is just that. He's a slot guy who complements Watson and Dobbs really well. He's a speedy receiver. And number 50, though, a little bit high, I thought. I thought they could have gone a number of different ways. Safety was still on the board. I would have loved them to take Sidney Brown here. There were other better speedy receivers still on the board. Jalen Hyatt, Josh Downs, even um, Rasheed Rice could have been in play here. For them to go Jaden Reed was a little bit concerning and question marks I had with Brian Gudnikist. But overall, I think he's a good player. Number 50 was a bit too high. Now a player that Green Bay again, when they took Sean Clifford, I was baffled. They brought him in for a top 30 visit, so we should have known there might have been something there. I didn't think they would take him, let alone in round 5. Sean Clifford was a projected undrafted free agent no one was projected to take Sean Clifford he was a guy who according to the mock draft database nobody had mocked him anywhere and he gets picked in the fifth round this is shocking now I know they needed a backup quarterback I, I just don't understand the pick I think you could get a veteran backup backup quarterback which probably should be the way to go anyways considering Carson Wentz is available I think Carson Wentz is a fine backup and a veteran mentor there Sean Clifford I just don't understand the pick what really at all. And I thought they reached for him for a guy that was probably going to go undrafted. The next two are kickers. One was picked in the fourth round. One was picked at number 99. And Chad Ryland and Jake Moody. Now I'm going to explain this. I don't think they're bad picks at all. This one I have a little bit of uh, an issue with, with the Patriots. My issue with it, they traded up eight spots to get a kicker. Don't think they should have traded up for a kicker because I don't think very many teams are really going to draft that kicker in the fourth round. Jake Moody's a fantastic kicker. Number 99 is pretty high when there's still some premier players on the board. Players that fit needs for the Niners. I just didn't understand why Runny or why you saw two kickers come off as early as they did. Do I like them? I like both the players. I think they're going to be good kickers. Maybe a bit high for me. Zach Charbonnet out of UCLA went at number 52 to the Seattle Seahawks. I didn't like this. I thought it was too high for the Seahawks. Charbonnet himself, great player. I think he could be a number one back, but this team has Kenneth Walker. Kenneth Walker is a great running back. They could have got a second running back, and they did get a second running back later on in the draft. Charbonnet just didn't really fit. They could have gone interior offensive line. They could have gone a number of other ways. And I just didn't understand why they went with Charbonnet as high as they did. I think he was a bit of a reach. And I guess his play style does complement Kenneth Walker a little bit. But still, I just didn't love it for them. And I like Charbonnet as a runner. But I just not in Seattle where they already have a number one. Uh, Brenton Strange was one of my least favorite picks in the entire draft. 
Picked at number 61 with other tight ends better on the board. Darnell Washington is still on the board. Tucker Craft is still on the board. Zach Kuntz, who's one of my biggest steals, was still on the board. I just didn't understand it. And I guess we should have known Mel Kuyper was saying that there were teams around the league that really liked Brenton Strange. We saw him mocked pretty high in some of Mel's mocks. Didn't think anyone was going to take him in the second round. He's a fine tight end, and I guess he could be a good number, good number two tight end to Evan Ingram. Just thought it was a bit high for Brenton Strange. Tank Dell, I don't think that's Tank Dell that's being shown here in the picture. But Tank Dell, I think, was a bit of a, uh, a, a, a reach. Because for the Texans, they didn't need to go with a slot speedy receiver. I think you kind of have that in Robert Woods. John Mechie could maybe play in the slot. I think he's probably an outside guy, but I think you needed a guy who's going to challenge and be a deep ball threat. But a contested catch guy, Tank Dell is not doing that at 5'8". I'm sorry, he's undersized. He's an incredible route runner. He's quick, and I like Tank Dell as the prospect quite a bit. Not to Houston, though. I just thought it was a reach for them. They picked him in the third round. Wasn't in love with that. Next up, we have Kendra Miller, who's the 71st pick to the New Orleans Saints. Why is this a reach? Because the Saints didn't need to go with the third running back. They picked up Jamal Williams. They had Alvin Kamara as well. Why did they need to go with another running back? Was very confused by this pick. With a number of really good receivers on the board, this should have been Josh Downs. Josh Downs would have been fantastic for the Saints. And they went with Kendra Miller. He's a great running back. Just not, just not a pick that I thought the Saints needed to make. So I wasn't in love with that. Broderick Martin was the 96th pick to the Detroit Lions. This guy was projected to be a between a 5th and 6th round pick. They took him in the 3rd round. The Lions made a few appearances here. But I get the pick. You needed some interior defensive line help. And I think Broderick Martin could be that for you. Just a bit high for the player. I think maybe in the 4th round I'd be okay with it. But you took him in the 3rd. I didn't love it. Next up, we have Marte Mapu, who is the 76th pick. Again, good player, and I know Daniel Jeremiah really likes Mapu, but you picked him at number 76 with some premier players still on the board. If you were going to go linebacker, Trenton Simpson's just kind of sitting there for you. I believe Dion Henley still on the board for you. For you to go Mapu, it's a very Patriots pick, and I just didn't understand it. So him at number 76, okay, I was a little confused by Next up, we have Trey Tucker, who was the 100th pick to the Las Vegas Raiders. I get I get it, but at the same time, I think the Raiders should have gone corner, man. There's so many good corners in this class, and they only came out of this draft with one corner. And Trey Tucker is a fine receiver. He's going to fit nicely in this team. They needed a speedy guy to pair with Jacoby Myers, Devontae Adams, and Hunter Renfro. Trey Tucker is a fine, speedy guy, but I thought there were more needs. And I think at 100, I think he could have been there at like 120, 125 if you want to get him in that range. At 100, wasn't in love with it. Next up, we have DJ Johnson from the uh, to the Carolina Panthers at pick 80. Similar situation to Marte Mapu. Good player. I think he's more of an off-ball linebacker. Um, an outside linebacker and a 3-4. So for him to, I just didn't understand it. Don't think he fits the scheme all that well in Carolina. Maybe they're going to play him as a true edge on the opposite side of Brian Burns. I guess that's what they're planning on doing. And they needed another edge rusher, which makes sense. But I thought DJ Johnson was a fourth, fifth round guy. You picked him at number 80. Didn't love that. At number 58, I thought Luke Schoonmaker was a bit of a reach. Um, I like Schoonmaker as a tight end. I think he was a third, fourth round guy. And you get him at number 58. Ahead of, again, Darnell Washington, Tucker Craft, Zach Koontz, who I had higher grades on. Schoonmaker is going to be an impactful player. Michigan produces good prospects. They needed another tight end since Dalton Schultz went to Houston. But at number 58, I thought it was a bit high for Schoon. At number 18, we got Jack Campbell. I love Jack Campbell. I think he's going to be so good for the Lions, and I'm not hating on this. Number 18 is a bit steep for a linebacker. We don't see linebackers going round one typically, especially linebackers like Jack Campbell, and I think he's going to be awesome for the Lions. I really do. I just think 18 is a bit high to take him. You had that number 33 or, yeah, 33 or 34 pick. 
I think there's a chance he's there at one of those picks. Unless the Bills are really interested, I don't see a team taking him after you. So you got him at 18. And same thing with Jameer Gibbs. Both fantastic players who I think start day one for you. Just a bit high where you took them. And me and the mock draft guy reacted to this one. Will McDonald was a bit of a reach. At number 15, you get him in the second round, great value. He's listed as an edge, and I do think he is a in a 3-4 and off-ball linebacker. Where are they going to play him here? I just don't know where he fits in a 4-3 because he's too small to be a true edge. And I guess they're going to play him in one of those linebacker roles. Maybe he can be that Quan Alexander replacement, but... He just didn't do that at college. It didn't make a lot of sense for me. I didn't love the pick. I thought there were other players. If you want to go linebacker, go with Nolan Smith. I think he's perfect there. There were just some question marks I had there, and I was not a fan of this pick very much. So, yeah, those are the big reaches of this draft for me. Let me know who do you think was a reach. Who do you guys think went a little bit higher than you thought should have? Let me know down in the comment section below. Be sure to hit that like button. Subscribe if you are new. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Adios.